Okay. Good afternoon. Welcome, everyone. Thanks for joining us today for, it's hard to believe, but this is the last new knowledge session of this series. So thanks for joining us. Uh, my name is Sandy Ratliff. I'm with Virginia Community Capital, and I'm happy to be a partner in this program with the Washington County Champ. Washington County Chamber of Commerce, sorry, uh, and the Virginia Highland Small Business Incubator and the town of Abington. We've been doing this since 2014 to support the uh, businesses in Washington County and what that's, that participate in the Washington County Challenge. And it has become something that we're getting folks from all over the Commonwealth, and we're happy to have you join us. Um, uh, I just wanted to say this, let you know that this record we are recording this for training and education purposes. And in order to keep the webinar flowing and stay within our one hour time frame, uh, we do have everyone muted and your, your video off. However, I know that our presenter wants to hear from you. And we uh, please, if you've got a question for Kim, post those in the Q&A section and we will, uh, she will address those during her presentation. Also joining me today is Kathy Lowe with the Virginia Highland Small Business Incubator and Nita Farmer with um, the Washington County Chamber of Commerce, as well as Bridget Floyd that works with uh, Nita. So these are uh, my partners in crime on this series. Um, but I'm delighted today to have uh, Kim Davis. Kim is the Executive Director of the Friends of Southwest Virginia, as well as the Southwest Virginia Cultural Heritage Center. That's a lot to say. I need to put effort in in when I say that. But we're happy to have you lead this. Kim has lots of experience working in various aspects of marketing and promotion over her career, and I'm sure she will share more with her experience. But Kim, thanks so much for leading our session today. And I personally have been looking forward to this session today. Uh, marketing is something that I love and been very passionate about and also in helping small businesses. So Kim, I'm going to take it, uh, turn it over to you. Well, thank you so much. And thank you so much, Nita and Kathy and Bridget for help sponsoring this along with Sandy. I am really honored to be here with you all today. This is an area that I'm very passionate about. And I love seeing the attendee list so far. There's a lot of folks that I've recognized. Uh, so hello. And let's just go ahead and jump in. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. And then um, if you all can, let me just put this down right here so I can see it. Okay. So can you all see this, uh, the very first slide of this, making sure everything looks okay? You're good. Thanks. Okay. And if at any time uh, my audio breaks up or anything like that, just let me know um, and we'll, it, sh it should even itself back out. But uh, today we're going to be talking about how to develop a marketing plan. And I really thought, you know, there's a lot of us in marketing. And even if you're new in marketing or been around for a long time, sometimes it's just, it's time to recreate our, our marketing strategy and actually get it on paper and put it in a plan. So my goal uh, with today's presentation is to go over some of the basic things that need to be in a marketing plan, everything from identifying where we are now, defining your target audience, knowing your competition, setting your goals, um, getting the right marketing tactics like advertising, PR, things like that. How do you create a budget? Like how much should you even put back, you know, for marketing, not put back, how much should you budget for marketing? And so that's what we're going to talk about, kind of the basics. We're going to dig into the basics a little bit. Next, I'm really going to talk about some owned media. These are things that you actually own as a business and that you control. And I'm going to give you some uh, best practices and just some of my experience on each of these. I'm also going to talk a little bit about digital marketing because I always think it's always a hot topic, uh, especially if you've been in marketing a long time, trying to figure out um, which way you should go, or even if you're brand new, what, what does it all mean? And finally, we're going to take this all, we're going to take the basics, we're going to talk about what we own, what our strategies are, and I'm going to show you how to lay that out into a marketing plan, like how to do that. So let's hop in there. I do want to tell you a little bit about myself. Um, I've got about 15, 20 years of event and destination marketing experience. Um, I started off in public relations. I uh, thought I would stay in PR and quickly moved into marketing. Um, I worked for a CVB or a tourism office, a DMO, um, and uh, then moved into event management, attraction management, things like that, and marketing. 
Um, as well as I have a lot of background, but in brand and identity development, crisis communication and tourism strategic planning and partnership. So as you see here, a lot of my background is in the tourism slash event industry, but I really believe that what we're going to be talking about today can be applied to any industry, no matter what you are in. These are just the basic things, the best practices of marketing, and then you can uh, customize it to the industry you're in. So we're going to start with basics. Number one, number one thing you need to know is you're starting to write a, a marketing plan is where are you right now? Are you a brand new business that's just starting? You've got a lot of growth ahead of you. You've been around for a while, but you really want to increase your sales. Um, what are you doing? You know, what, where are you? And there's a, there's a basic marketing principle that they teach you like a marketing one-on-one that I really believe in it, it works and it's the four piece of marketing. So what I ask you to do is take a moment and think about the product that you are marketing. Is it a product? Is it a service? What is it? And really be able to define that. Then what, what are you trying to market to the consumer, even a business consumer or a, a, a B2C consumer? Next, what's your price? How much are you charging for that? How much are you willing to discount that for different promotions and things like that? If it's free, let's say you offer a free service, well, what are some added value that you bring? Really being able to define that is really important. Next place, where is this product currently being sold and where is it being marketed to? I think those are two different things with place. You can look at that definition a couple of different ways, but where is like, where are you marketing to? Like, is it, is it, um, you know, how are you doing it? And then where is it sold? Where can people buy? Is it online? Is it in your storefront? Where is that? And then next is promotion. Like, how can you, like, what are you currently doing to market your product? And so if once you have these three things or these four things, I should say, you'll get a kind of knowing where you are and please be honest with yourself. Don't use this section to say where you're going or what you want to do. Just be honest and say, this is where we are. Now let's see where we should go. Next, we're going to dive into how do you define your target audience? And I've got a couple things here. Really, the first thing you want to do is analyze your current customer database. And you can do that a lot of different ways. If you have been in business for a little while, you've got a, a customer database. It may be an email database. It may be a point of sale system. Whatever that is, analyze it. See where, you know, people are. See, I can't. If let me click, see where people are from. Maybe you captured their ages when they spend. Maybe you have peak seasons and at Christmas time. Other folks may have peak seasons in the summer. You know, what are their spending patterns? What are their interests and where are they at the stage of life? Now, you may not be able to get that all from your customer database. Some of these may be social media analytics, and we're going to get into that and, and how you can kind of tell, but really just start analyzing where your current customer base is. Also, I'm a big believer in something called social listening. This has taken some time online to see how people are engaging with your business. Uh, go to Google reviews, go to social media. And if you're like, Kim, nobody's commenting on anything. Well, then that's, you know, that, that's still saying maybe people aren't as engaged. Maybe your followers aren't engaged with what you're doing and what can you do? But maybe they are giving reviews. Maybe you have a very, you know, you've got a restaurant or retail store or something like that, and people are leaving reviews. Uh, and so being able to, to hear what they're saying and what their uh, feedback they're giving. Next, I mentioned a little earlier, but social insights and Google Analytics. We live in the golden age of data. I mean, we can get data on anything. And so making sure on your website that you have Google Analytics set up, as well as um, for social media, Facebook and Instagram, being able to use Facebook business or meta business, it's now called, uh, being able to get those insights of who all's engaging, who all's coming to your page, things like that is really helpful. Next, check out your competition. I am going to go into this a little bit deeper in the next slide, but who, who are your competitors targeting? You know, who are their current competitors? Who are their current customers? Things like that are key. And then ask yourself who could benefit from your products and service. I really feel like you can take a little bit of time, I mean, literally 15, 20 minutes maybe, and really identify these things and get them down. You're going to be able to create what I call the ideal customer profile. And this is going to say, what is your ideal customer? And maybe you have three or four different versions of this. I know that anytime I start a big marketing campaign or a website project, if I'm working with the agency, this is one of the very first things that they will do is like, let's create an ideal customer profile of who we're going after. So let's say 
you know, with Friends of Southwest Virginia, we do a lot of marketing of the region. We market Southwest Virginia people to come uh, visit here. And so one of the things we may look at, let's say we want, you know, we're going after a family um, that may want to come here on a weekend or their week vacation. And because, you know, gas prices are where they are right now, we may say, okay, let's, you know, tighten in our target market and maybe let's go to like a Knoxville market, a Boone market. People want, maybe want to get out of like the more heavy traffic area and into Southwest. And so um, we may target a woman ages 35 to 44 with children, um, you know, that's going to be making the, you know, that's living in that area. Um, that's looking to do outdoor adventure and things like that. Uh, we could feature a couple that's wanting to do a long weekend and we feature some of the experiences, the, the, the great weekend getaways that we have throughout our region, we may feature that. And so um, being able to really know who you're going after is key. My recommendation on this is having three or four and really focusing on those. Next, knowing your competition understand, you know, understand your market. Where are you in? What are you doing? So identify who your direct competitors with, you know, I always say like in a fast food, you know, it's like McDonald's and Burger King, right? And then who's our indirect? Like, who are you kind of in competition with, but not directly? That could be if we want to keep with the fast food um, analogy, it'd be like McDonald's and Papa John's. They're both fast, but they're both different types of food, different types of experience. But they still compete sometimes with the same customers. And also new entrants. Who's coming in the market? Who do you need to be aware of? Once you identify who they are, you know, you've got your handful of competitors. Next, I say have a basic summary. Grab a piece of paper and do these, do these type things. Um, make sure you are, you know, do a search engine. Just type in their name. Um, I also would recommend that maybe go on incognito mode in Google. It's always a great way to do this. You go in incognito mode, it takes away your location and your IP address. So it's, it's really just like a cold Google search without any, you know, uh, any information going in. Also check out their social media channels. How often are they posting? What is their engagement? What's their tagline? And how are they positioning themselves in the market? You can also, um, who are they targeting? You can look in their advertising. Are they doing, um, how are they trying to target their folks? And if you see if you can kind of identify the types of audience that they're targeting. Next, what are they offering their um, customers? What are they offering in their marketing? Really getting clear on that. Next, what's their general marketing strategy? Like how are they going after? Are they using traditional media like TV and radio print? Are they going more digital? Or maybe, you know, maybe it's just on their website, social media, what is that? See if you can kind of outline those things. Online marketing strategies, how are they promoting themselves? Just how are they, what is, what's their e-newsletter? You can subscribe to your competitors' e-newsletters. I always say do that. That way you know kind of what's going on and how they're talking about things. And really just be honest. What are their strengths? Review their content, product descriptions, photography, videography. Like kind of rate that. Next is weakness. Um, how do you respond? How do they can respond to complaints? Or, you know, they're getting Google reviews, TripAdvisor, uh, social media reviews, how are they um, responding to those? And then how are they, are they hard to contact? If you try to call them, is anybody answering the phone? Is their website easy to navigate? Things like that. And then what competitive advantages do they have over your company? Really getting clear on that, as well as, you know, just getting that whole big picture of here's what, here are my, you know, top five competitors and here's the good Here's the strong, here's the strengths of them, and here's some areas that they're weak. I think are really clear, and this is going to help you find that niche where you can where you can market and, and do, and you know what's going on. Next thing that you really want to think about when you're trying to build a marketing plan is your goals. And I get a lot of questions from marketing folks, like, what type of goals should I, um, if I'm going to write a marketing plan or have goals, what should they be? And there's kind of four ways you could do that. There's more than this, but this is where I found you may have a profitability goal for your company that you want this marketing campaign to generate X number of dollars or, or new business or new leads for you. And then what are those objectives? Um, you may be um, in the market for a long time. And let's say you have 50% of the market. So it's like you and someone else in the, in this market. Um, you may say, okay, you know, next year I want to have 60% of the market or in two years I want to have 60. And how are you going to get there? You know, really being key, key on that. Promotional goals are places that you may want to promote your business or, you know, things that you want to participate in. You may want to say, I want to, I want to be more visible. So I want to 
maybe sponsor some events or um, in, in attendance, have a booth, or I may just want to run promotions, things like that. And growth goal, depending on where you are in your company. I know growth goal is a big key for me right now in marketing. If we hit some of our marketing metrics that we have created for this year, I really think it's going to help us expand some of the services we can offer and our team and things like that. So I'm really excited about just, you know, some of those goals. KPIs, key performance indicators. So these are some just realistic ways that you can set goals. Um, these are kind of like what I call the top four or five um, things that you can measure. Um, maybe visitors to your website and social media, you know, how many followers you have or fans you have uh, on social or how many people coming to your site. Um, next is leads. And I'm going to get into leads in a little bit when we talk about um, e-newsletters and things like that and what you can do. But, you know, a lot of times you can do advertising or you can, if you have a storefront, you can actually capture leads. And, and what do you do with those? And how do you tell about their qualified leads? So you, know, you can get a ton of leads. You can get hundreds of leads from different things, but are they qualified? Are they going to bring you more business? Next is opportunities. Like what is, how many opportunities do you have out there right now that are close to closing business? Or maybe that, you know, maybe things are early in that sales funnel. They're just cold. And then, um, but maybe some are getting ready to close. Like those are the key. You know, maybe you say you want to close out, you know, you want to move people from, one bucket to another. And we'll talk about that one bit. And then also conversion rates. Conversion rates are what drives me and my marketing plans. Um, you know, I always look about what's my return on investment. Um, what, how are ads converting? If I'm running any digital ads, which I have several going on right now, I'm looking at them daily to see how they're running, how, how they're performing. And if they, if they're not performing well, I'll do some tweaks and see if I can get that, um, get those doing better. And then, you know, also, one of the questions that a lot of people say is like, where should I advertise? How should, what marketing tactics should I use? You know, you've got traditional advertising and I'm a big believer that you don't, you don't, traditional advertising is still important. Uh, everything's got its, you know, plan. There's certain things that do better. Um, television advertising, I actually had a, an campaign that ran on TV for, for, for several years that did really well. It really depends on the type of plan it is. If you want to do TV advertising, it is a little bit more expensive. Um, it, I'll really say, make sure you have a product that has a higher price point, things like that. So you can get that ROI. Print advertising is still important, especially if you're getting leads. Um, in the tourism industry, we have several publications that will do um, response cards still. I know it sounds like old fashioned, but it still works. They'll do response cards in their magazines um, and uh, you fill that out and then I'll get a lead that you want more information about the products or services that I offer. Uh, radio advertising is still unique, you know, for different things. Uh, you want to look in that and then outdoor advertising is to be billboard, uh, wrapped vehicles, um, signage on the road, things like that. I will tell you that in marketing, if you are going to start looking at buying marketing, you need to understand how to buy these things. And I know there's probably been a lot of different, there's a lot of resources out there. There's a lot of resources in this program, this new knowledge program about how to do things like how do you buy TV? How do you buy print? You know, taking time to understand that uh, will make you a lot more savvy and have you save a lot of money. Digital advertising is also important, um, and we'll go into this a little bit more detail, but this includes social media, Google ads, YouTube ads, sponsored posts and blogs. Now that can be, sponsored posts and blogs can be very interesting because um, the key thing is there is like people, it's more an influencer marketing. It can be very expensive, but it can be very effective. So it really depends on your budget. If you want to go after key influencers to post blogs or post uh, sponsored content on their social media channels, um, especially if you found someone that has 100, 200, 300,000 followers, um, it's expensive, um, but it, it can work, especially if you've got an online uh, store or things like that. People can buy just at the touch of their hands. I'll tell you, it does work about, about quite often with my little Google, uh, what is it, Google Pay? So it's always good. PR, don't forget PR. Um, it is, um, you know, really important. And you may say, Kim, I don't know if I really want to have a press conference all the time or, you know, and it doesn't have to be that, you know, it can just be, uh, PR can be everything from holding press conferences to sending out regular press releases to doing media interviews. Maybe you're an expert in your field. 
Um, and you know, you can be a person they want to interview for, you can also be attending networking events or being a sponsor at an event and having a booth, you know, any way that you can get your name out there, uh, is really important. I just find that if you do have the means to do proper, you know, like if you're going to go out there and do press releases and things like that, to please put them out consistently would be my biggest recommendation there. And then estimating a marketing budget. Um, as we're just digging into some of these key concepts, um, you know, the biggest thing, the first thing I'm going to tell you to do is know your sales funnel, know how the sales process works within your organization. And so, you know, how many people do you have coming to your site each month? And then how many leads are generating from that? Maybe you have like a webinar coming up, you know, you know, and you've got that on your website, how many people are signing up for it? How many people are actually converting into new opportunities? And then how many opportunities, you know, can you close to sell? And then what's that typical revenue? You know, that there's a lot of different sales funnels, you know, that, that you have. If you have an event, you know, your sales funnel could be, you know, just event awareness and then getting them to your website. You know, then they're kind of a warm audience. You give them your ticket page. and You've got a pretty good lead there. How do you transition them into actually purchasing a ticket? Um, and then knowing that process is really important and how many steps is in that um, because then you're going to be able to kind of define what those goals are. Know your operational costs, you know, know how much it's going to cost you and time and labor to do the marketing. Do you have enough internal staff or are you going to have to hire staff or do you hire an agency? That's always a big question. I'm a big proponent of agencies. Um, but you know, different folks you know, do different things. I, if you have a limited staff, you can really maximize the budget with agency, but you've got to understand, you know, how they work. And that's, that's a whole nother thing, but I can always answer any questions on that. But, um, and next is just, you know, what if you don't, what's your cost if you don't act, you know, be sure to calculate if you don't get in the marketplace, what that could be. And then next, you know, setting your marketing budget marketing budget based on business goals, you know, really look at what are your objectives you're wanting to get this quarter? What, what do you want to obtain this year? What's your sales goals? Um, and how many of these contacts need to be delivered to your sales team or to your team, you know, based on their close rates, you know, how many people like CD was talking at the beginning, like, oh, you know, work at a place, the Southwest Virginia Cultural Center, it's a big mouthful, but we have people that come in and buy artisan um, goods throughout the entire region. So how many people do I need to come through those doors or how many people do I need to online to really help generate and hit the sales goals that we have um, for our retail store? So those are things, you know, knowing what I need, kind of know what to put into it. And then also really what's your, pos this is really position marketing as an investment, not just a cost. It's not just the line item that we don't know where it goes. It's really saying, okay, we're going to invest in this and this is the goals and these are objectives that we are expecting out of these marketing dollars. And then consider where you are in the growth stage. Um, are you in growth mode? Did you just start, you've been around, you know, two or three years, you're really wanting to scale. You're going to put a little bit more money into your marketing or if you're in planning mode, like you want to get ready for something, you know, you're going to put money there. I will tell you on average, and I did some research going into this. On average, most folks will spend anywhere, most companies will spend anywhere between five and 25% of their budget, their annual budget on marketing. That's a big range. I would say most small businesses will spend about 10% a year that are established. And then startups will, will spend around 12 to 20% a year on marketing. So just know that um, that's kind of the, the general, uh, but it really depends on your you know, how much sales you're wanting to create or how much awareness you're wanting to create and, and what those goals are. So I really wanted to take a moment. So we've talked about all the basics and I'm going to tell you here in a little bit how you're going to pull all this together into a proper marketing plan that you can write. But I really want to take a moment and talk about owned media because it's something I get really passionate about. This is the area of the internet that we own, okay, or the area of our business marketing that we actually have control on. And the first thing I want to talk about is website. What are some key things that you can make sure that your website's doing? And then I want to say in your marketing plan to take a moment, any owned media that you have and write a little blurb about each thing. So um, it just really kind of will help you build out. Here's all the things that we're currently doing. So you have your website, make sure the design fits your business, make sure it looks like your business feels like your business. Keep it simple to navigate. One of my biggest pieces of advice is get your friends and family to navigate your website. 
maybe if you are a retail store, like if it was me, I would say, okay, pretend you're like looking for custom made baskets by an artisan. And how long does it take somebody to find that on our website? You know, that will help me. The less clicks you can have, the better. The more clicks you have, the more the bounce rates are, the higher people will, will not get to where you're going. Uh, use responsive designs. That means that the site will go um, at any a, a number of different um, levels. Most of you all know this, but it can go from your laptop to your phone to a large screen. What does it look like? Make sure you're looking at your website on all different types of um, devices. A lot of times we create websites on the computer, but most of the time people are looking at it on their phone. So just know that. Uh, use visual elements. People don't read. <laughs> and so making sure you've got visual elements, I think are key graphics. Check your readability. If you don't know what this is, I would recommend you to, to Google, Google this, but what it is, it's like, what's your font size? What is your, the size of your uh, line? Like what's your line height? You know, how does your background contrast with your text? Can you read it? Is it short sentences? Um, I would also, you know, making sure it's readable. Also, if you have a front, like a public facing site, I would encourage you to do some research on accessibility for handicap awareness, you know, making sure that you have um, on all your pictures that you do all the text and things that way it can read out loud what that picture is if somebody's visually impaired. Um, and so there's a, there's a whole host of things that's just, that's just one example, but uh, knowing you have those. Include your social media buttons. I know I do this with companies a lot. I'll, I'll look for their social. I want to see what, how they're engaging with their audience. So include your social buttons on your website and also write a strong call of action. Like, why are people coming to your site? And what do you want them to do? What kind of information do you want you know, them to know? Make sure that they are there. Next, going on to social media, you know, we all the time, you know, we'll start a business or we'll start an initiative and we got to get a social channel. We got to get a Facebook or Instagram. And that's, that's a good start, you know, focusing on the right platforms. Where are your, where are your folks? Again, if you're, if your business, a lot of your business is on Instagram and you're not as familiar with that, or, you know, now we're a lot of on TikTok, there's a lot of information out there. I know there's been a lot of information in, in the new knowledge sessions over the years on social. Take time to educate yourself, uh, surround yourself with people that can help give you advice. Um, use a content strategy and calendar. I do this. We have a monthly content strategy and calendar that we use. Um, and, you know, we go ahead and plot out the month and what we want to promote. And we make sure we can stick things in there. And we just have a clear vision. We also schedule our content. You can schedule your content. There's a lot of scheduling platforms out there. I know Social Sprout, Later, uh, Hootsuite. Uh, there's a ton of them. Um, that's, just, that's just a couple. But, you know, making sure that you can schedule it. And then Make sure that you check your social first thing in the morning and last in the first last of the afternoon to get any type of engagement that might have happened. Any questions? Um, have both an organic and a paid strategies. You know, what is your organic? You know, that's your content calendar. What's your paid strategy? You know, which ones do you want to boost for a little bit of money uh, to make sure it gets out there to your audience? Because as you as you probably know, um, what it's a very low percentage of the amount. Uh, of followers that we have to actually see our content. So how do we get that in front of them? Also use analytics. Like I said, Facebook business is fantastic or meta business is what they call now is a fantastic tool. You can literally, I would tell you at the end of the month, take about 15, 20 minutes. And the more you do this, the faster you'll get. Look at all your posts for the month and see what the engagement was and see which ones had higher engagement than others. And then tweak your strategy from that. Uh, respond quickly to your audiences, you know, don't uh, leave them there for weeks at a time. Uh, respond as quickly as you can. If you don't want to be tied to social after business hours, that is fine. You can always, you know, put it out an office message on your social messages uh, and let them know that you'll be back the next day or, you know, the next working day. Uh, engage people with visual content. You know, again, um, I always say that graphics and things like that are always good. Don't bombard your followers. You know, you don't have to post three or four times a day. I mean, you could probably post three or four times a week and be fine. Um, you know, people just want to make sure there's been activity in the last few days. Not, um, you know, but don't, but don't let it go um, months because you don't want to bombard them. And then digitally guard your reputation. Make sure that if people are um, writing um, or that, that if they're putting comments and things on your Facebook, that they're being respectful, even if it disagrees with what you're saying. I always have a clause on our social pages that say, you know, 
in any, you know, um, inappropriate behavior, such as like, you know, language, sexuality, things like that, then um, we're going to, we're going to remove that. We have, we have the right to remove any inappropriate things, but we're not going to remove things that we just, that may that have a, maybe they disagree, um, but they're not disrespectful. So a lot of times your followers will come on and, and kind of and fight for you, but if they don't, you can easily write, you know, a response. A lot of times this will happen in like business service business, like hotels, uh, restaurants, things like that. People will comment on Google TripAdvisor or even on your social pages and you can quickly go on to see, um, quickly respond. And people, a lot of times they'll see the critique, but then they'll really look at how you're responding. And then remember, it takes time. Be patient with your social media. If you're just starting out, be patient with it. Just be diligent with it and be consistent and you'll get there. One of the things you may want to think about if you haven't already is blogs. There's a lot of different types of blogs you can look at and you're like, I don't have time to, to write. Well, they could go pretty far for you. Um, you could hire somebody to write you five or 10 blogs and you could use that. You can release one a month or one every other week or so. Um, but it really, what I like about blogging is it really enhances um, the search engine optimization. Uh, it really helps you rank higher because you have more content. Um, and so that's where, um, you know, there's a lot of different things. You can do a list like best of, you know, 10 best things to do here, or how to do this. Uh, there's a lot of different types of blogs. You may need to get help on setting it up on your website. And then if you want to do it off your website, you'll have to have hosting and a domain name. So just really deciding if you want your blog to have a name. And if so, you want to buy that blog domain. And then finally, you may need to get a design service to help you um, opt, you know, make it work and make it set up, or you can just design the blog yourself, especially if you're using something like WordPress or something. Um, and then also if you need help with blog writing or even editing, uh, you know, there are different folks out there that could help, or just, you know, if you don't have time or you can, like I said, hire somebody to do that writing for you. Uh, e-newsletter and database, just have a couple more things on owned media. Um, if, this, I get really passionate because I think email newsletter database are two areas that we don't, a lot of companies don't do consistently and they don't take full advantage of. Invest in a strong email marketing service. There are, there's an auto, a marketing automation platform. You can use things like Constant Contact, MailChimp. Um, there's, 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 like, there's hundreds of them. Um, we have, I've used MailChimp for years, um, but I've also used some other ones too. Uh, do the ones that best fit your needs. Um, and then you have leads. If you're going to get leads, get an automated campaign. And what I mean by this is, let's say that you are attending an event and people sign up for your newsletter or people just go to your website or you advertise like with a magazine or a print publication and they send you leads. What do you do with those? I always do an automated campaign, which is where we put them in the database and then they will get a series of two to three campaigns over a two or three week period, or maybe you just want to do one or however you want to do it, but it really pulls them in and gives them a little more information about your company, what you do, where they can opt in more to learn more. Um, and so I really encourage you that if you haven't used automated campaigns, they will save you a ton of, a ton of time because you literally just upload the, the email information and off the campaign goes. So it's really nice. It, it knows that when somebody new comes in, what to do. If you're going to import data into a system, please import clean data. You'll thank you'll thank me later if you if you haven't done this. Um, the first name, last name, email address, minimal. That's you at least need that. You want business name, address is always good. Uh, and if there's any tags you want to put, if they're in a certain group, maybe they're a donor group, or maybe they're the media, or maybe they buy certain things, uh, or maybe they sign up for certain services, you may want to tag them. But go ahead and do that as you put them into the system. And with email communications, you know, we all know these, but I wanted to give you this a little heads up. Have a catchy subject line, share educational content. You know, it's always great when people can read something and actually learn like a little tidbit or two. Make sure you have a lot of visual. Uh, make your content easy to read and point to the primary, you know, and point like what's the What's the primary call to action? Like, what's the purpose? Is this just an educational email or you need them to do something? Make sure you call that out. Okay, creative. There's a couple more things. I am going to get on the uh, soapbox a little bit about creative. Make sure you invest in strong graphic design. I really believe that if you take the time to invest in graphic design, it's going to help elevate your business. It's going to help elevate what 
um, the, your brand and what it looks like. So, you know, making sure that uh, you've got strong graphic design, create a brand that's consistent across the border, you know, and everything you're doing, try to be as consistent as possible. Make it simple. Don't clutter it down, you know, make it readable. We talked about the readability, less words, the better. That's always good when you're creating something. Photography and videography. This is another area that I really invest. If you've got, if you've got, um, if you've got the budget and, you know, maybe make, make the budget, invest in strong photography and videography. I always say a picture can say a thousand words. A video can say a million. You can literally put together a 10 second video. And now with how easy, like things like reels and all the TikTok stuff is, it's pretty easy to put together a video. Think ahead of what you may need and then, you know, and have that. So I think, you know, taking the time and the investment in photography and videography goes a long way and you can use it for a long time. Make sure it's evergreen. Uh, which means you can use it for a while. So digital marketing, did want to touch on this. We talked about owned media, talked about digital. So in our marketing plan, we're going to talk about each one of those owned media. Now we're going to talk about digital marketing and some key tips with what to do here. I love social media ads. I think they were one of the best things that we ever created. Um, and that really allows us to be a have to target ads to hyper-targeted users. I mean, literally you can say, I want to, you know, target not only this location, but people that are interested. Let's say we're going to do a music festival. I want this location, people that are interested in this type of music and that are between this age and this and this gender. You can really get as specific as you want in social ads. I'll also tell you a trick that I have found really helpful in social media ads is you can do ads called lookalike ads. They're Facebook ads. And you can literally run ads to people that look like your current audience, but that's not your audience. So people that have the same type of interest and things like that, but maybe they're not following your page. So I've done a lot of like campaigns, a lot of ticketing campaigns to people that have liked the pages I had and then uh, been able to convert them either into new followers or into ticket sales. So if we're, if we're having an event. Uh, reasons to advertise on social. You can reach a ton of new customers. Again, the whole lookalike audience thing is just one of the ways. It's really low cost of entry uh, compared to traditional marketing. Um, it really, you get a ton of insight if people are clicking on your ads, things like that. You have a wide range of formats and, and, and what you can do, you can do a static ad, you do a video ad, things like that. And you can really accomplish a lot of your goals. Uh, Google, Google ads, like this is like paid search display ads. Again, you can be very specific of what you, you want to get in and you can really be as wherever you want to be. They don't have to be on Facebook or uh, Instagram. It's very cost effective. You can target your audience, really build that brand awareness. It's great for lead generation and it's really measurable because you can see how the ads are performing in real time. And so finally, as we're kind of wrapping up, and I know we're, I'm giving us some little time for some questions, if there's any, but I want to tell you about like, how do you pull all this together? We've talked a lot about the basics and I really gave a, a feedback on owned media and digital media, but how do we um, pull it all together? So, the, so if we're going to sit down and write a plan, the first thing I would encourage you to do is write an executive summary. You just a short, brief a review of your company and the takeaways you want to get from the plan. Next, make sure that you identify what your vision, your company's mission and vision and values are. That's really going to play into why, what you're doing and the direction you're heading this marketing campaign. Next, you're going to identify your marketing competition, which we talked about that in the basics. So you can identify, this is the industry, this is the market, and this, these are our competitors. You don't have to mention, you can, but you don't have to mention competitors by name, or you, but you could just describe them. You know, our, our competitors are, you know, other educational, you know, um, institutions or, uh, you know, you could, if you're in education on the wild went that way, or, um, you know, retail stores on main street or something like that, you know, you may want to, to look at that or retail stores in a different area, whatever that competition you identified. Next, what's your target customer? You know, we talked about that in basic of how to identify it and those customer profiles. So maybe you write in here what your customer profiles are and why that you're targeting them. Next is outlining your goals and objectives. Those are the goals we talked about, really being very specific of how you're going to do this. So let's say one of our goals is to, you want to uh, increase, um, you sign up on your e-newsletter by 15% in the next year, you know, being very clear of, and how are you going to do that? You know, you're going to run, 
Uh, you're going to mention it more on social. You're going to make sure um, you have it. You may be in your e-newsletter. Maybe it's in a signature of your, of your sorry, not your e-newsletter, your email. It's a signature. You, know, you can find different things of how you're going to hit that goal, being very specific there. Um, and then present your marketing strategy. Like, how are you going to do it? And this is where I always say what, that area I talked about, like owned media and digital media and PR and things like that can come up. If you talk about what you have in this and here's your strategy and here's how you're going to use it, it's going to help you get clarity on what you're doing uh, and where you're going and how you're going to be, what tools you're going to be using. And then next is really what your budget is. You know, how, how are you setting that? This could be a good way to set what your budget is, but it could be a good way to, if you're trying to um, lobby for a little bit larger marketing budget, this could be a good way to do that and what you're going to do with those dollars. And then I always like to end the, the, um, the marketing plan with really redefining what those goals are. You know, if people don't read anything, they're going to read the last part. Usually they might flip to the very end, but it'll say, here are our goals and here's the timeline. But they call them smart goals, you know, that have like measurable and um, they're actionable and they're timely and those type of things. You just re out, you know, re put those of how, what you're going to do. And really the key thing is, you know, with marketing is that, you know, there are dollars that have to be spent onto it. It is an investment, but what, like making sure you have a real ROI, like what, what is it going to return for you? Is it PR? Is it more awareness? Is it sales? Like really being clear of what you want to get out of it. That will help you make decisions on how to go forward. So, like I said, I know I wrapped up a little bit fast um, here about 45 minutes, but um, do we have any questions? Hey, Sandy, I'll turn it back to you and see if we have any questions. Oh, you do uh, in chat. Um, uh, can you tell us more about Google advertising? Yes. Yeah, so Google ads, you just go to googleads.com and, and set up an account. That will help you do a couple of things. You can do paid search. So that would be if you want to just search different key terms that people, you know, think about your business. It could be your company name. It could be your industry name. It could be your industry name and your location. You can have a lot of different terms there and it'll kind of guide you through that. You can also do display ads throughout Google, which is uh, being able to, you know, usually you have a creative ad that you could run on um, throughout Google or throughout different uh, websites, depending on the way you go. But if you just go to googleads.com, it'll kind of help you set that up. They've made it very user-friendly and um, the, you know, costs can be anywhere from 10, 15, $25 a day to hundred, two hundred dollars a day. And I'll just tell you when you're looking at spending money on digital, look at, you know, that's where we talked about your goals. Look about like what the ROI is like. So if I'm going to sell a hundred dollar, let's say concert ticket, you know, I'm going to be willing to pay so much, you know, for a conversion more so than if I'm selling like a $10 concert ticket. So, you know, kind of know, and you, you know, you don't want to be spending, you know, $75 to convert somebody to buy an ad when your ticket sells only $10. So really being able to, to get smart on that and, and, and learn that. Well, and I guess that before I go on to the next question, that kind of goes in line with something I asked, wanted to ask is any tips to uh, marketing on YouTube because Google owns YouTube. So if I set up an account on Google, you also use that one on YouTube? I think so. I, th I think it's all connected. It's all yeah. connected. Um, so YouTube ads are very, um, they're very effective. And, um, you know, I know a lot of us want to skip through them, but um, but sometimes you can do the three, five, 10 second videos that you have to watch. And so you really, what I like about YouTube video, YouTube advertising is you really pay for what was watched. So if it hit, you know, people skip it and sometimes you don't have to pay for it or if they only watch so much, they watch half. Um, so it's really, you're paying for people to actually sit there and watch yours. Um, and so it is all run through the whole Google thing. Um, I've found that usually when I've done the YouTube ads, I'm in my Google account, but I'm also in YouTube. So, okay. Yeah. Um, uh, great information. Can you speak to tools like Linktree? Does this take the place of website or is it used in connection with the site? So I'm a big fan of Linktree. I know a lot of marketing people that aren't. So there's going to be a mixed reaction here. Some folks on my here be like, oh no, I like that um, apps or 
you know, different sites like Linktree where you, where it links to your social media pages, because, you know, right now, if you post something on Instagram, you can't have a link in the, the, um, the post. You can do it on the stories, but not the posts. So a lot of times you'll say link in profile. So if somebody wants to learn more, they hop over. And um, I know that there's a service called Later that I used to use a lot. Um, and it would, you could just, they had like a little link, like a little short link and you would hit it. It would pull up your whole Instagram and you'd pick which one you want to learn more about. I know a lot of media outlets use that type. Linktree is one that you can just have, you, you have in there like what buttons, it's like a little button and it all, it's what you, you want to promote. So let's say you have an upcoming webinar, you want to put that at the top, you know, then you can have webinar and then you can have different things and you can have like your website there too. So people want to get to that or your blog. Um, I'm a big fan of simple and what's easy and giving um, the viewer on your phone, you know, on Instagram and this, the information as easy as possible. So they know they can go into that link instead of going to my website and trying to figure it out. Again, we want to have as less clicks as possible, having it right there where they can click right into it. So that's why I'm a fan. And that way you don't have to update your, you don't have to update your Instagram profile every time you have a new post. So. Great. And I just want to note, um, Andrea Hicks. Hey, Andrea, good to have you. Uh, she shared that Google will check uh, if your page is mobile friendly. Just type it Google mobile friendly test in the search and it will ask you for your page and you just test it. So that's great. Now yes. I have some questions, but folks, if you have questions, please um, uh, share those uh, so that we can have Kim address those. You mentioned about social listening, listening. Uh, are there sources that will help you streamline that into one area? Like you mentioned Hootsuite. I mean, Hootsuite will let you post, but are you able to share what others are saying? Um, you know, I know I use Google Alerts um, and I have for bookoos of years just because I want to know what's in the press mm -hmm. in the media uh, that I don't always see. But is there anything, though, again, back to social listing that I don't have to go to each site every day that it kind of monitors all of that for me. There, there are paid platforms. I haven't, I'm, I've, I've kind of dabbled in a little bit that you could do. Um, really when I'm was talking about like social listing, it's really what's going on, you know, on your own brand. So looking at your messages, looking at your comments, which all that can be found in the back end of um, a Facebook business, you know, and that that's the one thing I like about Facebook business is that, they have made that so easy. And if you, like a lot of us are actually administrators on multiple pages. You know, we're not just have one, we're not just like one, you know, a lot of our companies have multiple entities and different things like that. And so like, you can see them all there together. Um, you can see, you know, you're, you're just right there and you just click and you just click on the profile and pull it up. So it, it's really like looking at what that is. And then things like, um, you know, Google alerts are great. Like you mentioned, Google reviews. If you get Google, you know, if, if that, if you're the administrator of that business, you're going to get those reviews immediately in your inbox. Um, as well as, um, any type of like trip advisor, anything like, you know, like that, that you're saying, you know, that your business is on usually the marketing person or the owner or whoever's in charge of that has that access. So you should be getting this type of things. If your company has that and you want to be added, you can usually add another person. Super. Um, I was in a meeting last week with Virginia Tourism Corporation, and they were talking about marketing, and they said that it looks like print advertising is coming back. Have you heard anything um, in the industry? I'm still a big that? believer. I didn't, I mean, I'm still a big believer in print. The reason I am is because there, especially in tourism, there are, there are several publications that will give you great leads. And I have been able to generate you know, um, back when I ran music festivals, I was able to generate, a, you know, pretty significantly a good number of ticket sales off of those leads. So my biggest thing with print is, you know, especially now with like QR codes and things coming back, you know, you don't have to have as much on the page. Brochures are getting streamlined and what you put you can literally just click, you know, your QR code and get all the information you want. Um, I'm still a big fan of, uh, especially in tourism, like rack cards, um, different things like that, um, that people can, can pick up, especially if they're traveling, they, they, they want something in their hand. 
Uh, but then if you put a QR code on things, then people that want it more mobile can get that as well. Um, so I definitely see in, um, print come back. I've seen more people get more interested. I know the prices have gone up significantly over the last two or three years, which I'm like, oh my gosh. Um, but, um, but with that, you know, it's just, of course, you know, we're all in that time where everything's going up, but, um, but yes, I'm, I'm a big fan. If it's, it's really, you got to look about what your goals are, you know, and, and is, does it have a longer shelf life, different things like that. Well, and I just want to mention, since we're talking about Virginia Tourism Corporation, if you have a tourism related business, they have some co-op, co-op advertising um, grants. But, you know, have you done any uh, in your working with other industries or similar in- industries to do co-op advertising where you're all kind of spreading the, the cost out as an option to be able yes. to be? Absolutely. Yes, I've done it in a lot of different ways. I've done it where uh, we all have ads on the same page. I've had it where we all opt into the same look of an ad, but our logos are there. Um, I've done it where we're all spread out. Co-op advertising is a great opportunity um, to really take down the cost um, of like, a, let's say a full page ad. Let's say it let's be easy, $5,000 for a full page ad. And, you know, if you get five, may, maybe they might sell you, you know, you could do two at two half page ads for 2,500 or, you know, three or four um, and uh, really kind of bad on that ad. And sometimes you can say, can I be placed throughout the publication? Um, so I think that's really good. Um, got a question here. Could you tell us how to get more engagement on social media? Um, my biggest thing would be, you know, there's a lot of different ways to do that. Um, is you could do contests. As soon as people do contests, um, you could ask questions. That's the easiest thing to do. Like ask for feedback questions um, and get people to, you know, engage there and make sure you're engaging with that. Also making sure that you may want to boost an ad or two, spend, you know, a little bit of dollars and boost a few ads. And that way, that way your social will come up in people's feeds because I mean, I, I don't know the percentage today, but I mean, it used to be like very low percent, like less than 5% of your audience even sees your messages. And so, you know, if you want to boost it, you know, you may want to boost an Instagram story or um, boost a, you know, Facebook post or something like that, that may help you. And it's pretty low cost. I mean, you could literally do it for a couple of days for, you know, I don't know, less than like 25 bucks or something and uh, could help you do that, especially if you're trying to push out something, but, you know, really asking, engaging things instead of just posting things that are more educational, you know, just as, you know, this what's going on, but maybe posting like more questions and things like that. And people get more engaged. Super. Uh, Caitlin Thomas asks, uh, what is the best route for someone starting a small business? I educated my peers on business startup, but um, she's asking what's some of the best ways to um, start promoting your business as a startup. Absolutely. So making sure I would take it probably in this order, making sure that, you know, if you're able to do a website, which they've got so many options now that are pretty low cost, uh, doing a website, if you're not able to do, like, let's say you you have a, um, an artist, like, let's say you, you make something or you're selling something on your own. Um, you know, there are different things you can do Etsy sites and you can do a lot of different things, but, you know, making sure you have a website presence outside of social, I think is important if you can do it. Um, and then having your social media pages, uh, is definitely the kind of the first start there. Um, next is, I would say, you know, looking at digital advertising, um, you know, it's very, uh, low cost and you can hit a lot of people. Um, and then you're going to add on if you want to do more of your traditional advertising. However, my biggest thing is like with traditional, it is expensive. Um, and so maybe getting your budget there, you know, cause you want to make sure you can get that return of what you're doing, but you really, it's just starting those digital ads, things like that, making sure your website's robust, but easy. You don't have to spend a ton, uh, of money, but do put an investment into it. it. It will pay its way off. It will, and make sure if you're going to sell something online, you have a very easy point of sale system using things like Shopify or something like that, that is just small business friendly is key. And it's going to help you get more leads. And then, so I would do the website, the social, and then the e-newsletter. Those would be my first three things and then start digital advertising. Great. My friend Andrew Hicks just made a comment on a side note. I just finished up my last year of marketing school and the biggest trend was QR codes for business cards. 
QR codes are coming back strong. Uh, and I, I think I'm seeing that too. And, and I think it's a great idea to have those on your, um, on your, the back of your business cards or what have you, so people can scan it and find all your contact information. Absolutely. Uh, and, and Andrea, congratulations on marketing school. If, if, if it's the one I think it is. Um, I did that clay many, many months ago, but congrats. <laughs> great. Uh, Rex asks, what is your advice or suggestion to reach audiences who are leery of mass marketing outreaches? So read that to me one more time. I'm sorry, I can look uh, it up what are your suggestions to reach audiences who are leery of mass marketing, M-A-S-S, marketing outreaches? I think this is where customization and personalization comes into key. And we, we kind of touched on this, but like if you're going to do e, you know, e-newsletters, things like that, making sure you upload complete and clean information, their name, you know, their business, things like that. So when you send an email, you can send it personalized. So it has their name to it. Um, and then if you're talking about, I want to make sure I understand the question, but if you're talking about um, like, let me make sure I understand it. Cause I don't feel like I'm answering that. I've got it here. If you're talking about people who are leery of mass marketing outreach, if it's an internal thing, I'm going to go two ways here. If it's, if it's an internal thing, like maybe you have a, you're, you're, it's hard to get approval for it. Um, then really talking about what the ROI and, and how you're, and what you want to, what your goals are to get out of that campaign. If it's more of like external, like how do you build business, like a relationship with the business that's being mass marketed? I think it's just finding ways to, you know, interact with those people on social one-on-one or, to have e-newsletters and things like that, um, I think are, are really key. Um, do you have any, or do you know of any small business owners in the region that may be using geofencing um, and are doing well at it? There's a lot of people using geofencing. There's a lot of, um, there's a lot of companies that are using it. There's a lot of nonprofits that are using it. There's a lot of different people that are using uh, geofencing, which is meaning taking an area, you know, and really being very specific. I know that we have some, um, those type, we have those type of ads running along the 81 corridor. I'm pointing because it's right back here. Um, but on the 81 corridor about visitors coming in from the Tennessee into Virginia line about, about things that we're doing here at the cultural center, because it's just right off the interstate. Um, so trying to get people that are interested in travel information or event information, things like that. So it, it does work. It costs a little bit more than general, just a generic um, social or a digital ad, but it, but they but you can get higher conversions from it. I suspect something tourism related is probably a better fit than uh, a dress shop. I mean, I don't know. I'm just thinking about the cost. Yeah, I mean, it could be, you know, maybe they're competing for people that are downtown um, like let's, we'll, we'll take Bristol, for example, great downtown, lots of restaurants, lots of places to retail stores, things like that. So if folks are coming downtown to, um, to eat, we'll say they're going, you know, you could, you could get them, uh, for retail business or vice versa. So you could, you could look at it. Great. Um, Andrea showed that Virginia Tourism Corporation, that's what VTC stands for, is having a webinar today at 1.30 on co-op opportunities. Great timing. I, I have ESPN, but I didn't know I could do it that well. But um, <laughs> <Good job. laughs> um, Oh, yeah. And then, uh, Edie, I hope I answered your question. What uh, Virginia? Just go online and look for Virginia Tourism Corporation, or if Andrea, if you're still here, if you've got a link or um, a website for them to go to, that would be great. I'm, a, I'm just assuming it's out of the Richmond, but um, I, you know what? Yes, it's their, their marketing director, Lindsay Norman, is going to be giving a presentation here in a little bit uh, on the co-op opportunities. But if you miss it, um, you can go on to um, BATC. I think it's like, anyway, um, you can go to their website. You can go to their like internal web, like their business, their industry website, and uh, go and, and check it out. And they'll have all the co-ops for the year listed on there. Okay, great. Well, I don't see any other questions. Um, I don't, Kathy, uh, Nita, do you have any questions before we uh, we we turn Kim loose? I just want to say thank you. I know that it takes time to develop these presentations and you've got a lot of 
irons in the <laughs> fire, but uh, I thank you for uh, putting this together today and presenting. And um, and also want to thank those that participated today and came. Uh, hope you were able to snack while you while you watch Kim and listen to her. But uh, you know, as I mentioned earlier, this is our last session in this series. And actually, this afternoon we are going to start a meetings on uh, planning our next series to start in September. So if you have ideas or topics that you want us to include please share those with me, either drop me an email or share them right here on chat before we end. Um, Cause we do these for you all, the, the business and organizations um, and to help you. So it's not because we're getting anything and we couldn't do it without people like Kim who is donating her time and expertise. This is how we're doing it. So um, please let us know what, what other ideas and, and sessions that you have. And just to remind you, today's uh, session is being recorded and will be uploaded to the Virginia Highlands Small Business Incubators Facebook page and to our YouTube channel, New Knowledge, where there's probably over 170 workshops that we have uploaded there as you have all kinds of on-demand learning at your, um, at your uh, time and leisure. Um, uh, Nita, you want to add anything? I just want to say thank you to Kim. Uh, very informative. I know a lot of people has gotten a lot of great information from this, and this is something that we can always have in the future. So thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule. You it's always welcome. a pleasure. It's an honor. You do. And thank I'll just you. note that um, Nita being with the Washington County Chamber, I think that's something that you need to add to your your marketing plan is getting involved in your chamber because that's a great way you can network with uh, um, other businesses in your community, whether that be in Washington County or wherever you're located. Um, I'm, I take full advantage of that. They can help you uh, grow your business. So get mm -hmm. involved and you'll get a lot out of it. Um, I'm just doing a plug and she didn't pay me to say that. I just uh, I just know how important Thank you, Sandy. the chambers are. Yeah, I'll, but I'll take tips, Anita. Okay. But thanks That's again, Kim. Um, hope to see everybody when we start back in September. Please let me know if there's any uh, workshops, topics that you want included, and we will try to add those. So uh, have a blessed day and uh, stay cool in this weather. <laughs> Bye. Thanks. Thanks, Bye. Kim. Thank you. Bye. -bye.